So what coincides with the combo valve is this micro valve. So this micro valve adjusts the amount of grit that falls out the conical section of the pot and into this particular hole here. So what's on the other end of this blue knob? In essence, what's there is a piston. So this particular hardened shaft here connects to the pusher line, which comes in this end, and the blast hose is on the other end. So this funny looking valve here has got incrementation on the side of it. So these increments represent how far I've wound that out. It's a good idea for guys that are new to blasting because they think, how far did I wind that out yesterday? Oh look, I've covered the four, I must be on four. Oh look, I've covered the two, I must be on two. So that is identifying how far that piston's actually coming out off that seat. There's a cap on the bottom of this. Why on earth would you put a cap on there? Sometimes the grit might stop falling. The grit could be damp. So you can remove this cap to inspect, whilst this is still on the blast pot, you can inspect up there to see if the grit is stuck. You can also, without the air on the pot, with the dead man disengaged, with the air isolated off the pot, I can take this cap off and poke a bit of wire up there, or even a screwdriver, just to see if the grit is running out. If it has been blocked, it'll start to run out of this. So this is basically just an inspection hole or an indicator, give me an indication of what's going on inside the valve. So as I said, one thing you would never do with the valves on the blast pot is wind it all the way out. If you wind it all the way out, that's a massive hole there for a lot of grit to run through and you can cause yourself all sorts of problems by doing that. So as far as these are concerned, what maintenance needs to be done on this? Well, there's a couple of things. Periodically, the valve will cease to work. And when I say periodically, after it's done a lot of grit or a lot of service, there may be a need to remove this valve off that hardened pipe. Now when you remove it, there's a gasket and a little round ball. Look at that. So the gasket is designed to seal this area. And you can see that's a different colour. What it is, is the cylinder for that particular piston. So the piston itself runs up and down that particular barrel. So as you can see now as I wind it, it's coming closer and closer. So to put that in relative terms for you, there's the hole that the grit runs in. And you can see now the piston is retracting, so the hole is getting bigger. So by the time I wind that out, it sort of endorses what I said about the amount of grit that can travel down that hole. That's a massive hole and a massive amount of fine grit can travel down there very quickly. So in relative terms, if you open that all the way up, you're leaving yourself open to all sorts of incidents and accidents because the pot has to have the capacity or the air I should say, has to have the capacity to move that grit out of that tiny little area there. So if you have it flooding in there, the air coming through hits that grit and immediately it becomes a baffle because there's a resistance there, just like the baffle in the muffler on your car. So it slows everything down as it, e it exhausts. So you've got a gasket, you've got a body, you've got a piston. Can I take the piston out to inspect it? Absolutely, if you wish to. So what you'll need is an Allen key that fits that particular Allen cap. And then you can see the Allen cap's turning when I move that back and forth. So what you'll need to do is undo that Allen cap. So what would I be looking for if I remove the Allen cap? Basically, you're looking at the cylinder wall of the, of the piston itself that you've been winding in and out to ensure that it is not compromised, scoured or damaged. So you'll find that there's two types of Allen keys. There's metric and imperial. Just make sure you select the correct one to do this particular job. So in this case, they're metric. So you'll hang on to the Allen key and turn the knob. So hang on a minute, it's a bit tight. What can I do? Well, if I go to put this in the vise, what can happen? 
I can actually bust the plastic on this particular knob to get that undone. So it's, in, it's imperative you have soft jaws on the vise. There's nothing wrong with on site. If I'm stuck, I can put a pair of Stilsons on that knob and undo it. So just gently increase the pressure on that knob. There you go. So I haven't wound it up tight as I just kept turning that Allen key until the knob remained in the same position to give me an opportunity to get this Allen key undone. So with the Allen key winding out quite easily, release it from the vise. As you can see here, I haven't damaged this knob whatsoever. So there's the Allen key, or the, the uh, Allen cap itself, the screw, and now I've undone that. We'll see what happens. If I wind this off, does it come all the way out? Oh, what's wrong? I've still got resistance. And then you continue to wind it. And now what I'm doing is screwing the top of this straight out of the body itself. So look at this. It's a square, so it's a key that fits in the piston itself. So what I need to do now is pop the piston out and have a look at it. So with your Allen key, just push the piston down until it comes out. So look, there's the piston. Just hold it to one side, push it a bit more, and there you are. There's the piston. So these marks here, all that is is where the piston has been turning around in the barrel as you've been winding it in and out. So what am I looking for on the piston? The piston itself has to be concentric, and the circumference of the piston can't be undermined by any damage. Also too, you'll find that if there has been a differentiation in pressure in between the air going into the pot and the air coming down the pusher line, you'll find that this piston will have a big scour mark across it and quite significantly damaged. Not only will this be damaged, but also the barrel in which I just took it out of will be damaged. So that differentiation in pressure can be a lot of things. One is, and here's an important tip, If I have a compressor that's too small to appropriate the size tip that I've selected, which we talked about earlier, the differentiation in pressure is the exhaust pressure is greater than the input pressure. So therefore what happens here is as the grit comes down and falls of its own volition and the air comes through this pusher line, you get a vortex arrangement happening because this is greater exhaust than what it is on the pressure side. So you get a, a vortex. So it starts to swirl within this tiny chamber here. And that swirling effect has grit with it. With the grit becomes abrasive, so it actually cuts away and undermines the integrity of this particular valve or piston. And all of this body here will be undermined as well. So what can ultimately happen is this body or housing can be chewed away to such an extent that the grit starts to exhaust out the side of the body. So it's imperative that you're, you keep an eye on your tip selection, your nozzle selection in relation to the size of your compressor and in relation to the size of your pot. So if I've deemed that cylinder is in good repair, the piston's okay, not damaged, I can actually reinstate that knob. Now, when you reinstate the knob, what I'm wanting to do now is to ensure that it picks up the hexagon head. There it is there, picking up, it's rattling around it. So I wind it in until it stops. Now what I need to do is turn this piston around in the barrel to ensure that it does click in. There you are. So I've turned the piston until it picks up the, the square head of the thread that goes in and before I move that now what I need to do is put this allen key or this bolt back in there with the allen key. So holding the knob screw the allen key back up like so. Now do I need to put it in the vise to do it up? No. If you'll find that if you hang on to that and turn this allen key, like so, in the end there. So I don't have enough strength there because, it, look, the allen key's not deep enough to go in this way. So because it's, I'm using the stem and I've put that back in, the allen cap itself, what I suggest you do, and the easiest way to do this, is to just squeeze up the shifter, hold it like so, hang on to the knob and nip that 
Allen cap up with that Allen key. So do I need to over tighten it? Absolutely not. Because remember, you're only screwing it in and out like so. So now wind it all the way in, make sure it doesn't grab. Have I got it on there? Yes, I have. There's the piston, happy days. So it's all back in the configuration that the manufacturer intended it to be. So look here, what have we got here? We've got two bolt stems and there's a little ball here and a gasket. So sometimes <clears throat> that ball may be missing. That means someone's had it apart and didn't know what they were doing. What does that do? Well, in essence what it does, it's just an exhaust port. So if I took that ball out and took that Allen cap out of there, what I have is air escaping out of there. So, was there air escaping before I started this job? No. Do I need to put the ball back in? Yes, I do. Because I don't want, I don't need a Venturi system there, primarily because I want all the air to come through this pusher line and this to be sealed up as it was as the manufacturer sent it out to me. So I leave the bowl in place and put the valve body back on. So the only thing I have to remember is, which way did it go? Well, we've got two sizes here, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Gee, which way did it go? Well, if you can't remember, and you didn't do what I suggested you do earlier, by marking these things before you pull them apart, like so and so, don't panic. Just leave this on the bench. Go over to your blast pot and see which side's the pusher line and which side is the brass threaded coupling. And you'll find one will fit the other. And that, that then will tell you which way this goes. So relatively simple. So if you get lost, don't panic. Go back to the blast pot because the pusher line will, with the big nut on it will soon tell you which one fits which. Then you say, okay then, well it was around that way. So that's the way it goes back together. Relatively simple. Make sure that you've got a nice clear clean bench. Put the gasket back on, like so. Make sure that that ball remains in place because we don't want differentiation in pressure. Your bolts, doesn't hurt to put a little bit of anti-seize on those bolts because you can see with this hardened pipe, it's got a little bit of corrosion starting. So that could be also occurring within the thread stems as well. So then all you need to do is slide, uh, put your bolts back on, slide them in the hole and do them up. Now, what I do suggest you do is, if you're on site, you need to have somebody help you to hold that still, because I want to make sure that those two stem bolts are reasonably tight. So look what happens. These ratchet spanners won't fit on there because the body is imposing onto that area. So I can use a shifter, but if you do have sockets available, I suggest you use a socket primarily because it sits right around the bolt and there's less chance of rounding that bolt off. So if you round that bolt off, you make it very difficult for any further maintenance. So one at a time, just bring them up slowly until you feel it stop and some resistance. So what's the appropriate pressure for these? 40 foot pounds. What's 40 foot pounds? I'm out on site, I don't have a tension wrench. Well look, just keep going back and forth. Now what is in relative terms here is, I've got a half inch drive square ratchet socket, 15 millimeter socket, a big fulcrum, and these are only BSP threaded bolts. If they were fine thread, you could put a bit more tension on, but because they're BSP, all you need to do is nip them up until they're nice and tight, and that's it. So the way to check that is, is with your open ender, you can see if you can pull any more onto it. Look, I can't because the fulcrum's smaller. I can't pull any more pressure on it. That's more than enough. So if you continue to wind them down, you'll actually snap them off because this base is harder than those bolts. So it's nice and tight. The gasket's squashed, yes. This is tight, yes. There we are. If you blow a hole out the side of this from differentiation and pressure, as I explained earlier, you will need to replace it. 
You'll find too that if you have that differentiation pressure, it does undermine the integrity of this hardened pipe. Replace that as well. So don't compromise or skimp with false economies. If there's something wrong with this, remove it, ditch it, put it in the bin and replace it with a new one. That way everyone remains safe. And at the end of the day, if you've done this correctly, you will remain safe.